All right, our next speaker is Liz Legit. Let's give her a big round of applause. Liz is the founder of Liz Legit Gallery and Design. She founded her business as an art advisor in 2012 after working as an in-house curator for a corporate collection. She's a volunteer for many local arts and culture organizations, including the Des Moines Art Center, Des Moines Metro Opera, and Ballet Des Moines. She was a member of the 2012 40 Under 40 class. And Liz, if you go over your time, you have to commission a painting of the entire business record newsroom and hang it in your gallery, and I, I don't think you want that. So. <laughs> Please welcome Liz. Creativity is that ineffable match strike. That flash in the dark that comes from, well, it's hard to say from where. You can't summon it on demand, but directing your mind to the task does help. You can't choose your creative type either. The musician is not an architect, the painter is not a poet, and not all creativity is artistic. That's the genius of an engineer, a surgeon, or a coder. I'd wager a guess that many people in the business world would not consider themselves a creative. As a gallery owner, people who favor numbers and data often say to me, I don't have a creative bone in my body. But here's what I have truly come to believe. Anyone can be creative. It is a muscle to be used and built over time. I have been asked hundreds of times, what makes an object art? And my answer is intention. The artist's intention on whether an object is art is what makes it art. Not what the viewer thinks, not if it's good or bad. None of that matters. What matters is the artist setting the intention to create and therefore making it so. Creativity is similar. If you set the intention to be creative, you will be. Intentionally make time for it, whether it's journaling for 10 minutes a morning or taking a painting class, it can help you see things differently. I remember one particular trip to the City Museum in St. Louis, a place unlike any other that I have been, a maze made up of 10 immersive art experiences. Picture a huge McDonald's play place, but made out of steel and airplanes. There are seemingly limitless ways to get from point A to point B in this place. And after I left, I looked at the city around me differently. I was thinking about how I could get to our car. Could I scale the parking garage? Could I find something to shimmy up? Or would I have to go the lame way, the stairs? My brain was temporarily changed by what I had experienced. All of this to say, I believe that business can be as creative as the arts and can learn from them too. We're truly not all that different. Artists begin with a blank sheet of paper and business people a problem to solve. Both have to experiment, see what works, edit, and keep moving forward until you're done, or at least willing to move on. And those doodles you drew in your notebook in school were actually quite productive. The left side of your brain is for verbal and rational knowledge, and the right side of the brain senses relationships and patterns. So if you're stuck on a problem, I'd suggest you begin to doodle to switch the side of the brain you're using. If you have employees who want to be more creative, consider that good design and art can foster creativity and joy in the workplace. We are all greatly affected by our environments. A survey of more than 800 employees at 32 companies said that art in the workplace helped businesses address challenges like increasing creativity and encouraging expressions of opinions. Art allows us to see the world from different perspectives and makes us more empathetic. And of course, creativity accompanies growth and innovation. My team and I opened the gallery doors in May of 2019. In under a year, we were faced with the pandemic. I had salaries and rent to pay and little initial reserves while feeling responsible for the artists that we represented. In a time that so many businesses folded, what saved us? Creativity and believing that people needed beauty and art to get through a hard time. After the initial shutdown, I started going to the gallery every day to talk on social media, and my team worked around the clock to create a completely shoppable website. I'd show up on video, share my passion for art, and hope that people would connect with what I was saying. It turns out they did connect with the art through their phone screens, and they bought it using that website. But this is not how it's usually done in the art world. Oftentimes, prices are a secret at galleries. If you have to ask, you can't afford it. And sometimes, even if you have the money, you're not allowed to buy the art if you're not deemed the right buyer. 
but I felt like we could do something different, and that desperate times called for new measures. We created our own best practices and paid little care to how it had always been done. Fast forward to today, and we're about to hit our five-year anniversary. We represent more than 60 artists from around the world. We're on track to ship artwork to all 50 states this year. And we were just named one of the country's top small businesses by the US Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Thanks. I have no doubt that creativity and a willingness to try new things saved my business. In both the arts and business, there is a joy in creating something from nothing, in finding a new way to look at an issue, and using creativity to find the solution. Thank you.